I will not photoshop the truth as a means to appease the uncomfortability of truth, truthfully speaking. I will not crop out what others prefer to go unsaid or resize truth for the purposes of fitting in your frame. I will not resize or rotate or flip it so that when you first hear it, it feels less offensive. I believe scars are lessons learned, so I won't even fix any blemishes. I won't adjust the contrast to make the message a little bit brighter. I won't add any special effects so the image looks more like me as opposed to Christ style. See, beauty in what you may see is ugly because Christ somehow saw beauty in me. So I'd much rather shop his photo than photoshop the truth. But he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. But then something happened and now I know he touched me and then he touched me again while he was supposed to be babysitting had never left cali but now i wasn't even sure what state of mind i was in what i didn't know was that i was about eight going on nine and i wasn't afforded the opportunity to decline what would be defined as my first sexual encounter Physical pain was secondary in comparison to how much my mind hurt that I couldn't erase, that we were already at third base and I feel we would be forthcoming. I went from studying my one, two, threes to three-way conversations with birds and bees. My thought process became a huge palette of complexities. Child life was no longer as easy as A, B, C. A, B, C. Always believed Christ. Did it ever feel God had inadvertently just knowingly left me? Now, oppressing penetration, quickened rage, Satan thought ugly variations would execute youthful zeal. Wow. But I wanted to know why. I was looking and I was searching for a sign. I was searching for a sign. Why was this happening to me? Why was I being awakened out of my sleep to watch cartoons? I was a small child making requests for oral sex, not because I liked it, but because it hurt less. And it sparked a strange curiosity. When a sex scene would pop on the TV screen, I would fake sick the next day to stay home to go back and watch what my mom didn't allow me to see. Every issue begins with a small seed. So be careful what you're planting in your spirit. Cause even though most feel that watching them graphic videos are for your enjoyment alone, please take note, allow me to forewarn that 87% of child molesters admit to trying to imitate something they saw from watching porn. And of course, there's the infamous question, why didn't you tell? I wasn't sure if I, if I was at fault or if I was going to hell. And then he touched me. And this time, he was my own father. Now sexually involved with the second man, what I didn't know was that I was nine going on 10. I was about nine going on 10. What would make someone want to touch one of their own begotten? I hyperextended my brain trying to make sense of his intentions. All the while teachers are saying she doesn't focus, she doesn't pay attention. I was going to every extent I knew. But still I was frightened, though could not be forgotten. I felt used and thrown away like paper cups and plastic utensils at nine going on ten. He told me to drink this cough syrup. I tried to explain I wasn't sick, but he kept giving me cough syrup. A weak attempt to try to get me high after I said no to Jose Cuervo. And soon as my younger brother went to sleep, he told me to come sit on his lap. Kept shifting me in very uncomfortable positions, which I thought well, I was somewhat familiar with because of the first encounter. My heart <laughs> was beating out of my chest. And the tears began to roll down from my eyes. And that night I slept at the bottom of the stairs, went home the next day and smiled like nothing happened. 
I said, I smiled like nothing happened. Why? Because Satan is a deceiver. One who gives a false impression had me to believe that it had to be something I'd done because why else would two grown men come after me? So I began to change the way I dressed, started to wear baggy clothes because I figured it would draw less attention. Every Sunday I went to church, hoping that someone would see my eyes, but I didn't have the courage to verbalize and know they saw all right. A women's meeting was held and after service I was brought to the front of the church as an example of what not to wear. I just wish for someone moment, just some one moment, that someone would pass the fact that I was wearing pants and more towards the fact of why I was wearing a dress. I said I wish for one moment they would look past the fact that I was wearing pants and more towards the reason why I didn't want to wear a dress. I stood there quietly, but on the inside I was screaming, can anyone see that I'm hurting? Or shall we continue this debate on denominations and what the women are wearing to holy convocation? I said Satan is a deceiver. One who gives a false impression. I assume numbness meant healing. I just had to be delivered, even though the sight of me I hated took no pride in how I looked, because I figured who wants somebody that's been molested? That's just nasty on top of complicated. So I took the pain, stored it in the back of my mind, and threw it in the safe and intentionally forgot the combination. Out of sight, out of mind. I mean, they prayed for me with blessed oil, so I had to be delivered right. Or at least I figured. But years later, it resurfaced, and I experienced a memory trigger. It became obvious that I could no longer put a band-aid on a wound that needed surgery. God had to be looking down like that's not why I allowed it or who I created her to be. I had made a habit of pretending like things never happened. Thought I could concoct my own healing remedy, which included reading, praying, and fasting. But the wound was infected and started to spread to every area of my life. All because I didn't want to sign the consent form to go under God's knife. I didn't want the surgery. I didn't want to face reality. I didn't want to answer him. I wanted him to answer me. What kind of God would allow an innocent child to be molested? Will allow me to share with you one of the most beautifulest, ugliest revelations. The same God who sent his own son to die on a cross that most would be ungrateful for and even more would take lightly and even more would crucify him again with our actions. And although he had no violence and no deceit was found in his mouth, it pleased the Lord to bruise him? That don't make no sense to us. But his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. The glory of Christ is the resurrection, but you can't just skip the cross. You can't keep the suffering of all the, the souls that he came to that were lost. You can't skip the suffering of all the souls that he came for that were lost. There is light at the end of this tunnel. We don't see the end, but he sees it clear. But some of us are just running haphazardly in the dark due to fear. God has amazing plans for us, but we got hang-ups. We hung up on trying to figure out why. Hung up on why us and why not some other child. Hung up on why we were the ones that had to deal with it and hung up on why we're not able to forgive. But Christ is the ultimate hang-up. He was hung up for you. He was hung up for me. So enough with the hang-ups, because his hang-up reigns supreme. So, to every little girl and every little boy who felt defenseless, for every man and every woman who feels like the enemy is beating them senseless, for every single swallowed cry in the middle of the night so that no one would hear, for every face buried in pillows to hide the tears, for every voice that wants to speak out and really tries but gets a knot in their throat every single time, for every throat that the enemy tries to choke with asthmatic breasts of anger, Christ is the breast of life. Let him be your inhaler. Some of us won't hear it unless it's from somebody who went through. And in that case, he allowed me to come before you and stand as a testimony for you, and it was worth it. 
It was worth every single ounce of physical, mental, and spiritual pain that I go through it again if he would allow me to stand before you again and encourage you to allow him to get glory. Because, like Paul, I reckon that the present sufferings at this current time are just not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Yeah. Y'all better give it up again for some minutes.